Okay, welcome everyone. This is Artie the Vintage Stitcher. This is uh, my very first tutorial. Uh, so, hopefully I have my angle uh, correct. And um, hopefully this all goes well. So we're going to try this and we're going to see how this all turns out. So this is the kit. Hopefully my hands aren't too annoying in here. And hopefully this is over my shoulder and you don't get a whole lot of my arm movement. Um, like I said, this is going to be a learning experience for all of us. And there might be a lot of stops and starts. And we're going to get going with that. So this is the first um, kit that Annie's, um, Annie's Craft Catalog has sent to me. So this is the month kit of the month club that you can join. The description or the link is always going to be in the description. And this is something that you can join along with me if you're interested in doing this. I know this is a little late in coming, but um, I wanted to kind of do this anyway and see how this all goes. So I opened the kit and um, it makes these 246 ornaments, okay? So what came in the kit, and I was actually really impressed with this because when I seen this, I thought, oh boy, it's going to be really kind of cheap stuff. And I, I wasn't quite sure how it was going to be. But I was very impressed with it. It came with the, the paper numbers to do the Christmas ornaments, the um, adhesive stickers for the, like, it, they're almost like a Cricut cutout sort of thing. Came with the paint, the paint brushes, the twine, the little hooks, the uh, tongue depressor to kind of scrape the, um, the little stickers on, paintbrush, sandpaper, and the wood pieces. Now, this is the part that impressed me the most. Um, the wood pieces are very high quality. I thought they were just going to be like thin, thin plywood, but you can see they're very, very nice pieces of, of wood. Um, very thick and durable. They're not going to break. They're not flimsy at all. Everything's pre-cut to size and um, everything's really, really high, very high quality. I was very impressed. Um, you know, sometimes when you join these clubs, you're just not quite sure what you're going to get. And, um, I was, I was very, very impressed. Um, so if, um, for the price that you're getting these in this club per month, um, I definitely think that the quality is there. Um, the quantity is here and we'll see how this all goes as we, as we go along with this. This is all a learning experience for both of us, but I really think, um, you know, the quality is there. The The sandpaper is a nice feel. The paper is a nice feel. It's not just flimsy card paper. It's a nice feel. The The clings are very nice. Um, you could tell it's very nice vinyl, very nice clings, very high quality. Um, they're very, very nice. The instructions are very detailed. Um, they also have some additional things that you would need. Pencil ruler, wax paper, parchment paper, scissors, hot glue gun, cup of water and paper towels. So of course I forgot to pull out the pencil, the ruler, which I probably won't use because I'm very much of an estimator. Um, and I will get my hot glue gun out when we are ready to use that. Um, so I did cover my surface with um, the parchment paper or the wax paper. And I do that every time that I um, am painting anything. So the additional things that I pull out is I have my scissors. These are just my paper crafting scissors. They're not my good fabric scissors. I also pull out extra paint brushes. There's two different color paint paint here. I'm not a real big fan of small paint brushes. I like a bigger paint brush. And I'm going to show you some extra distressing um, treatment that um, may, may be of interest to you further down the road um, on some of the projects that I had done in the past that everybody was interested in. These paint brushes I just get from Harbor Freight. They come in a box of like a hundred for five ninety nine. They're super cheap. I don't wash brushes. I, I I'm very much a disposable brush person. Um, just a paper plate because I don't. I like to keep my surface clean. I put my paints on here. A piece of paper towel. Um, I have two color of um paint, so I just have little bits of water here because I don't have running water in my craft room, and baby wipes. This is to keep my hands clean and it's also there's a distressing technique that I'm going to show you with baby wipes that um, may interest you. Okay, 
So I have this all laid out. Um, the first, the first thing they tell you to do is to paint the pieces. So that is what I am going to do. And I am going to start with the white pieces and I'm going to pop the paint open. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to pop the paint open and see how it is. Now, sometimes these paints are very um, thick. Okay. So that again is why I bring the water in. Um, and this, I'm not going to use this tiny brush because we're painting, we're painting the front sides of these. It says just to paint the front. So I'm, I'm assuming the back it's, it stays wood color, but, um, I'm going to show you how to, how I would finish the back and, um, hopefully that will, um, that'll be an extra little thing that they kind of don't pull up in this. So, um, sometimes these paints can be very thick. So we'll see how it kind of brushes on. Yeah, it's a little bit thick. That's where this water comes in. I don't like my paint to be that thick. Um, so I dip it in the water and I thin it a little bit, especially if you like that farmhouse look and see how much better it goes on. And it's going to soak into that wood a little bit better. Okay. It's going to soak in much better um, and it's much easier to work with. And yes, some's going to get on the side. They say just to paint the tops. Um, some is going to get on the side. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I read through the directions and it's going to be all right. I like a little bit more rustic. I like the wood to come through a little bit more. You may not. You may like your paint a little thicker. That's okay. This is all kind of um, a personal preference sort of thing. Um, you may like it thicker. You may like to thin it out like this, and then you may want to go back and do a second coat. That is totally up to you. Um, I like a little bit thinner, so this is how I'm doing mine. And I'm just going to set that over here and do that. So, so this needs a little bit more. And I, like I said, I don't, I tend not to dip my, I don't tend to thin my paint um, in a bowl or anything. I tend to thin it with just a little bit of water on my brush. That's uh, just me. That's just how I am. So it makes it a little thinner. It makes it almost like a stain. Okay. So um, I'm not going to have you sit here and watch me paint all these pieces. I just wanted to do an example and we have to wait for these to dry. So we are going to go through, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do this last piece. Okay, and I'm sure many of you have done painting crafts before, but you always want to kind of work with the grain of the wood. It's going to give you a little bit nicer coverage. If there's any brush marks, it's going to kind of just give it, it just gives it a nicer finish and it gives it a soak, it soaks in. So I always leave my brushes kind of like this. Um, the nice thing, and this is where the paper towel comes in hand too. The nice thing about these brushes is they kind of have a plastic thing, um, or I grab, I grab one of these baby wipes. They stay moist for a long time. So like if you're um, going to get up and you're going to go do something else and you're going to come back, say in a half hour and you um, want to, you know, you just want your brush to stay moist in between, in between coats or something like that. Just wrap it in the baby wipe and set it there. It's going to be fine for that little bit or grab a baggie, grab a baggie and um, put it in there. So you're not like throwing brushes away in between. But then when the project is done, definitely I, I pitch them. I pitch them. I'm, I buy disposable brushes, but that's, that's a preference too. These have like little like um, hole things, hole punchers. So everything's kind of nice. It's right there. Yeah. See, Ta -da. which is nice. Okay. So I'm squeezing this out. This one I'm going to use, um, and then we're supposed to go through and we're supposed to paint all these, all these, these are the, um, border pieces. Okay. So I'm going to see how this goes on. This one's a little thinner. That's good. This one's a little thinner. Okay. 
And this little brush is actually a perfect size for this because you can get these little ends and stuff like that. Perfect. I'm loving this. So, um, <laughs> I feel like I'm in kindergarten. I Sometimes I love to just sit down and paint. Um, you can wear gloves if you want. I am not a glove person. I don't mind if I get my fingernails dirty and my hands are covered in paint and it, it just makes me feel like I did something. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so I just do the best I can, try and get it. I'm not graceful when I'm doing my crafts. You're not going to see graceful videos from me. <laughs> You're going to see. <laughs> You're going to see the hot mess that I really am, remember. You know, and now thinking about it, I'm thinking, oh, I should have probably left one side, um, one side plain so that I could, and then flipped it over and dried it. But you know what? I'm just going to use my, my cup over here and I'm just going to kind of lean them on my cup. Okay. So I am not going to bore you with, um, you watching me paint all these. I'm going to go through, I'm going to get them painted and dried, and then we will come back and move on to the next step. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we're back. Everything is painted. Um, I did go ahead and I finished a few and I kind of, just for you know finishing purposes, but this is what we've got. We've got some finished. We've got all the pieces painted. We've got all our little um, cutouts cut out. Um, so everything is painted. I'm gonna show you a couple of like distressing techniques that I like to use when I am working on like different things. Um, the first part of the video, I noticed that my voice was kind of going in and out. So hopefully um, this part of the video, I'm a little bit more, um, I'm a little louder and I don't, um, I don't fade in and out as fast. Okay. So with the finishing techniques, I, you know, I'm not going to finish, I'm not going to do any finishing on that, um, the white part, but I'm, you know, if I wanted to distress the, the, the edges, you can do two different things. I, I, a lot of times I use this Waverly Antique finishing wax, um, and this is fun. I'm going to show you what I use this for at the very end, um, because there were some extra supplies in this kit and that I was really impressed with, and um, I made some extra stuff. Or I use my Waverly chalk paint, okay? So I shake this up good, and I just use a dab of this tiny tiny dab um in fact i'm gonna just put it on a piece of paper towel because you use so very little of it and you don't want it to um you don't need very much at all so i'm just gonna kind of squirt just a touch because you you're just not going to use that much um and close that up so I take my brush, again, my chip brush from my Harbor Freight, um, and I kind of just load this brush just on the tips like that, okay? And then I dab most of it off. This is kind of a stencil dry brush technique. And then what I do is I just kind of go super, super light, making sure I hit those edges, okay? Just super light, kind of all over. And you could do this as much or as little as you like. All right. And that kind of gives it that farmhouse feel. And I love this technique. I use this a lot. And this dries fairly quickly. So by the time we're ready to put this together, it's going to be dry. And then I let this kind of rest. And then I kind of go back in again, load the brush. And it's okay if they look different. They're supposed to look different. This is supposed to be a distressing technique. Things don't distress evenly. It's just, you know, that's not how things are weathered and that sort of thing. So you can kind of do that. And then you let that sit. And you come back in. And now you can do this with any color that you want. You can do this with the black chalk paint. You can do it with white. Um, I have done this with, you know, where I've had my 
my items painted white and I've done it with the antiquing wax. Um, play with it. If you don't like it, worst thing that happens is you paint over it again. That's worst case scenario. Okay. So So this is, this is fun. I could sit and do this all day long on stuff. Um, I do this a lot on my picture frames. You're going to see like in my floss tube videos and stuff like that. You're going to see I do this on my picture frames a lot um, because I kind of have a primitive household style. Okay, so I am going to wash this brush because we are going to use it again. Um, and I'm not going to waste it just for that little, little, little bit of, of what we did. So... Um, I'm going to show you another little finishing thing at the end that I did with these. So I'm going to set those aside and let those dry. Okay. And they'll just take a few minutes to dry by the time we get to the point where we need, we need that. Um, they'll be dry and ready. I need to plug in my, I need to get my hot glue gun plugged in here. I wasn't quite prepared. So get that warming up. While we're doing this. All right, the other distressing technique that I use, fold this up so I don't get paint all over. Those who have watched my other videos know I'm kind of a hot mess, is the baby wipe technique. So you take a baby wipe and you kind of rub it, rub it all over. And this doesn't distress as much. This, you can see where some of the paint is rubbing off, but you can do it on the corners, on the edges, and it'll kind of take, it'll kind of take some of the paint off and wear it off in different places. Kind of thins it out a little bit. This is not my favorite technique. Takes a little bit longer. Um, and to me, you really can't notice the difference. I would much rather, personally, I would much rather take like the sandpaper that they give you and come along and do the sandpaper technique. So basically the baby wipe thing is supposed to be similar to that, less messy, less sandy. But um, they sent along the sandpaper. So this is kind of a cute way of finishing things up too. And that just kind of gives you that little bit of a rustic, rustic feel. So, but the baby wipe does kind of soften the paint, which is nice for when you're using the sandpaper. It kind of softens everything up. So, and makes things kind of move along a little faster. So, I'm just gonna do these up real quick. These take next to no time to do. Just a little distressing. And you can do this, like I said, as much or as little as you want or you can leave them solid green um the ones i finished previously i left solid green i was really impressed with the paint and i thought okay i'm just gonna leave them i really liked how they turned out um so let's just get this finished i know a lot of your other tutorials and stuff speed up through the boring parts um I don't want my videos to be more like you're sitting in my craft room with me. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Let me know in the comments. Do you want me to speed things up through the boring parts or do you want me to chatter on? <laughs> I can chatter on. It doesn't. Um, you know, I'll, I'll kind of do things so that you're not sitting and watching me paint 15 pieces, of course. But like this little bit, this is not really... Hopefully I'm getting all this in the camera view. This is my first tutorial, guys. You gotta bear with me. I'm gonna get better at this. Um, but I do want you to feel like you're sitting with your with me in my craft room and working on this. So this is gonna take a little bit of time. All right. So that's kind of how the, that distressing 
turns out. It's a little bit different, but it's good. I like it. I like it. And you can wipe it off with a paper towel. Get the dust off of it. And those you can, those you can, let me clean some of this up. Those you can do as little or as much as you want. So here's kind of the difference between the two. Um, you can kind of see the difference. All right. So we're going to let the, we're going to set those aside for right now. And we're going to get to the, um, the, the little rubs. Now, I was, when I pulled out the rubs, they send two sheets with all the, all five, yeah, all five or six of the different rubs on it. I was like, did I read the directions wrong? I'm reading the directions. Are these supposed to be reversible? No, 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 not reversible. Okay, so they send you an extra sheet of rubs. And I could not figure out why. And then um, as I'm going along, think, you know, in crafting, things are not always perfect. And then I figured it out. Some of your rubs are going to, like, not come off the sheets very well. And then you end up with bits and pieces of this. So I was really impressed that they sent an extra sheet of these um, vinyl decals to so that you would have enough to make sure that you had enough of these rubs. So um, basically, you these you peel the backing off of them you cut them apart and you gently peel the backing off of them okay and you center them here just like this am I getting this in the video let's move this up a little you center this up and you give it a good press and this is where this little tongue depressor comes in and then you kind of just scrape it remember those like tattoos you used to get like in the gumball machines when we were kids and you had to like press and wait and press and wait and press and wait and wet them down this is really really similar to that um and I don't have a Cricut machine I've never been I've never been a Cricut kind of person or a vinyl kind of person so I did not realize like how much pressure you really need to put on this stuff to get these rubs and to get these vinyls off of off of the transfer um so it takes a fair amount it, it really does take a fair amount of pressure um so just keep rubbing at it and then what i do is i gotta turn this a little when you start lifting this you want to lift it very very slowly because you're going to see that things are not and you kind of have to rub it as you lift to make sure that things are lifting or things that are transferring the way they're supposed to. This is the part that took the most time because once it's on there, it's on there. See that little part of the M started breaking up. So you want to make sure you do not want to lift it if it starts to, to peel or break apart. This takes a little bit. So, like I said, I was really surprised at how much pressure this actually took. Those of you with a cricket, uh, comment, let me know, is this normal? Okay, so it's starting to lift. Starting to lift, starting to lift, starting to lift. And you can see my table shaking. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. This takes some time, so take your time doing this. Um, take some time, take some concentration, take some pressure. And if, those of you with a Cricut, if you have that Cricut transfer tool, it probably works better. And you're going to be able to see this probably better than on the video. Okay. 
but slow and steady here wins the race on this one. And there you go. It's all done. Look at that. And then I just kind of patted it down. Look at that. Look at how perfect that looked. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So then you do the same thing with the other one. Okay. Um, and I'm going to set that aside because you really only need to see one. But that's how you transfer it. Okay. Then here's what you do next. I'm going to reach across. I'm going to grab my glue gun here. Got my glue gun. And then what I did was, all right, let's get my pieces here together. You put your pieces, I line my pieces up. Can everybody see what I'm doing here? Line my pieces up like this. And they tell you in the, in the um, instructions on how to do it. So top, top, side, side. Top, bottom, side, side, okay? So this is really super easy. These went together like lickety split. And I just took my, my glue gun, which should be warmed up by now, but is not. Heat that up a little bit. Let's get that going. You always end up with strings. And I put it on a flat surface and I lined it up so that it was flush. And yes, that's why I work on parchment paper or wax paper. Um, and I made sure that it was flush with the back, okay? I'm gonna show you how we cover up this all this back. So if you've got glue stains on the back, don't worry. Or glue marks on the back, don't fret about it. I'm gonna show you some additional little things that I did to mine to fancy it up. Because you know, as crafters, we can't live well enough alone. So I did the same thing on the bottom. On the bottom. Line it up. Line it up. Line it up. Give it some pressure. Now, if you're not comfortable using your hot glue gun, you can definitely use like the Aliens um, tacky glue. You could use wood glue. You could use whatever kind of glue you want. Um, I love my glue gun. I can't live without my glue gun. The nice thing about the glue gun, um, if, if it's not positioned right, you can pull it apart, peel the glue off, and start over. So this all went together really nicely. Then you do the side to side. Again, you line it up. And look how cute that is going together. And then the other side. So these go together pretty quickly. I was having a blast putting them together. Oops. And this is what you get. Look how cute that is. Okay. So then... I'm going to kind of push this stuff out of the way. So then they send like these little cup hook things. Um, I don't have the hand strength for that. I do not have the hand strength for that. So I did not do that. Um, what I did was, all right, where's my ribbon here? I took my twine and I made my loop, okay? So I made my loop hanger. I just took a piece. I knotted it, made my little loop hanger, and you can, they give you plenty, so you can make this as big or as small as you want. Make your loop hanger. And cut that off, okay? Then, because I cannot leave well enough alone, I fancied mine up, look at that. So, I'm going to show you a real simple way of making a bow. I have my, my ribbon, okay? This is how I make my basic bow. I do not cut it off of the spool quite yet. I just take my ribbon, and I just do like a shoelace bow. Just like you're tying a shoe, okay? And then you just kind of play with it. 
play with it, you tighten it, you loosen it, you tighten it, get it kind of where you want it to look, just like that. Ta-da! Cute little bow. Then I trim it off. And if this one's a little long, I trim that one off. Okay. So I have my bow. I have my hanger. And <laughs> I have these little pieces of greenery left from my Christmas crafting. Okay. Um, I thought that was a little bit, well, it's not too big. But I thought it was a little bit too big. So what I did was I just cut these little pieces in half. You can cut them in half. You can leave them big. You can decorate it however you want. But you don't have to just stop here where the directions tell you to stop. Fancy it up. Oh my goodness. Do it. Do it all. So I fancied mine up because I love it. And I had little bells. I had little buttons. I had all sorts of stuff. So on the top, instead of doing the cup hooks, I put a glob of glue, all right, and I put my little hanger. I put a little bit more glue and just put my little piece of greenery there. And then I kind of lifted my hanger up so it was, the glue kind of set it in. Kind of hold it in place and then the glue will hold it like upright and then i glued my little bow look at that all right so then you got all your little glue strings but look how cute that is so, I left most of mine plain green, but now that I'm seeing this, I might go back and distress them. If you decide you want to go back and distress them after the fact, that is no big deal. Um, what I did was, I didn't like the back. I didn't like the plain back. So, here is where my other stuff comes in. What I did was, I finished my backing also, okay? I finished the, I put something, a little something on the back. I took pieces of scrapbook paper. I had scrapbook paper. You could use scrapbook paper. You could use wrapping paper. You could use felt. You could use fabric. You could use just about anything you want. Because I use this wonderful stuff, Mod Podge. It's my absolute favorite, favorite glue in the world. If you do not have Mod Podge, Mod Podge, never say it right you can use Eileen's tacky glue just thin it with a little bit of water so it's kind of like a um kind of like a syrup a little a little thinner than a syrup okay so let me get this open which is always a chore because I work out of my bottle this is where my brush comes in hand again and I just dip it in all right and make sure I got you on film here and I just brush the back this is how I Mod Podge my backs of all my ornaments. Um, I love this technique because it stays. And you know how when you're packing your ornaments away, things kind of just, they get beaten up a little bit. Your ornaments kind of take, take a beating. The other thing I love about the Mod Podge is it dries clear. So if you get some on the edge or it seeps out a little here or there and you didn't catch it, it's not that big of a deal, okay? And then I take my fabric or my piece that I've cut to, to size and I put it on there. And you got some time to move this around, which is what I love. I love, love, love Mod Podge or the glue technique. So you got some time to move around. Again, if you have like a little roller or if you have scrapbooking um, tools, you could probably roll this. I just use my fingers, make sure and it's kind of sticking in all spots. Just kind of laid down so that there's no bubbles. And then I put another coat of Mod Podge over it. So what I do is I'm sealing that those edges in really good so that they don't come loose, okay? I love this. And if they do peel up, like as it's drying, they peel up a little bit, you can always come back 
with either a little hot glue or you can come back with like a little paintbrush or a toothpick and put some Mod Podge back underneath it. But I have found that once you do this Mod Podge technique and you do these um, edges really good like this, um, it seals it in really nicely. So that is how it looks at the back. All right, so that is that. I'm gonna close up my Mod Podge. This stuff does dry fairly quickly, so if you're gonna use this, I kinda of get all my stuff that I'm gonna Mod Podge together. I get it all lined up, I do it all at once, and then I close up my, close up my container. But you can see how it kinda of comes loose. You have plenty of time to play with this a little bit. You can come along with your finger and kinda of seal that in, wipe it up, that's what the paper towel is for. Wipe it up, but it does dry clear. I love it. So this is this is a close up of the one I did with the backing, and this is all dry. And see how nice and nice and finished it is. So this is this is how mine turned out with um, with the stuff that Annie's had sent me absolutely love it the quality was absolutely there um i had so much fun making these um i definitely if the the if the quality of this is indicative of what we're going to get throughout the year um the price is definitely worth it now i said to you that they had sent two sheets of these like decals well i couldn't just leave well enough alone right so what i did was because I was playing, I was like, I can make more and I have stuff in my stash. So I made some extra ones just like this. Now mine are a little bit more rustic looking. Um, what I did was these are the Dollar Tree Jenga pieces. You can find them in the toy aisle at the Dollar Tree. And I glued two of them together to make the, to make the um, frame. So mine are a little rustic you know my 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 corners are not perfect and then i cut this is just cardboard just cardboard um it would work better like if you had the foam core board or foam board from dollar tree or something a little thicker and something that was already white i did not have anything white mine was kind of a brownish color so i painted mine white and i transferred the decals onto it and then i did the same technique where i glued the 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 pieces, the little frames to the side. Um, I stained my little wood pieces with the antiquing, the antique wax. So it was a little bit more rustic. Now you could definitely do the antique wax, you could do the white, you could do the green, you could do any color you want. Um, so I did mine like this, I centered it, I did the little green re and the bow and the bell. Um, I did not put a hanger on, on these. You could definitely do the hanger um, same technique. I wanted these as little like um, tiered tray sitters or shelf sitters or like tuck-ins for bowls, that sort of thing. And then again, I finished off the back with the um, scrapbook paper. So this is theirs and this is mine with the extra. So I was able to get all five of the projects here and then I did ruin a couple of the, the transfers. I think I ruined two transfers, but I was able to take pieces from each of them to make a fourth one. So I ended up with um, four, of, four extras of these ornaments, all five of the ornaments from the kit and four extras of these. So, um, let me know what you think. I, I absolutely love them. It was a fun project to do. I, I thought it was great. Hopefully my um, video turns out I'm not too shaky. I'm not too jabbery. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments what you think, how you would like to see. Uh, this is my very first tutorial. Let me know how you would like to see things differently or if you like this style over the shoulder. Um, I would love some um, critiquing some criti constructive criticism. I would love to know what you think. So, um, hope you enjoyed it. When you're out in the world, please be kind, spread love, and find peace.